Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Insta360 GO HD action camera. Insta360 are mainly known for their 360 degree cameras, but this one is a thumb sized 18.6 gram 1080p capable camera with a field of view of almost 180 degrees. It then has a built in gyro, so when the information from that is paired up with the video using either software on your phone or a computer, the the footage can be cropped and stabilized automatically, similar to what Real Steady Go does with a GoPro, and Insta360 have recently added FPV stabilization to the firmware, which is similar to GoPro's HyperSmooth, except you can choose between the two or have no stabilization at all after the footage has been recorded, because it's not done in camera, it's all software based. But originally the Insta360 Go wasn't made for us, and FPV has given the camera a second life. It was released about 9 months ago for around $200 so it's not cheap and was marketed as a small magnetic wearable camera that can capture short bursts of video or photos for situations that are over by the time you have reached for your phone. And it also does things like hyperlapse and slow-mo videos as well. But it can only be used to record video and audio for FPV so that's what I'm going to focus on. At the making of this video it outputs 1080p at 25 frames per second, but I've heard they are working on enabling 60 frames per second. And the sensor actually records at a resolution of 2720 by 2720 at 28 megabit, which isn't a high data rate for that resolution, however people are still liking how the footage looks when viewed on a phone in 1080p. And if you are confused because you've heard or read that the camera records at a higher data rate than 28 megabit, then those are the figures that the video gets re-encoded to once edited to retain quality. The camera has a 200 milliamp hour non-removable battery which they say is good for 50 minutes of video recording but in reality you don't get to test that out because the camera only has 7 gigabytes of onboard storage which equates to around about 25 minutes of video so unless you move the videos to your phone in the field 25 minutes is all you're gonna get and I can confirm that the battery did last that long. The included charging case has an internal 800 milliamp power battery of its own which charges the camera when it's clipped in place so I didn't find the battery life of the camera to be a problem. The button on the side of the charging case shows you how much charge it has and the camera's light flashes red when its battery is getting low. The first thing that you have to do is update the firmware because out of the box it will only shoot one minute videos otherwise the camera would overheat but the airflow from a quadcopter provides extra cooling to allow for five minute videos. Updating the firmware should be done through the Insta360 Go app which you can download on iOS or Android but I couldn't get it to update using Android so instead I had to download the firmware from Insta360's website and install it manually by placing the camera into its independent charge case which is also magnetic and then plug a USB data cable into the side which will then show as a USB device on the computer. Now Insta360 have also always favoured Apple which is why there is a lightning connector at the bottom of the charge case so I imagine updating the camera via iOS will just work but to connect to the app using Android they give you a USB-C pigtail lead or the camera actually has Bluetooth built into it so you can connect that way but I found Bluetooth to be really slow so I used the cable. I did find that the app runs pretty slow in general as well and the settings are really Really specific. For example, to enable five minute video recordings, you have to go into the go button settings and where it says press, you have to change it to standard video and then you should be able to set the recording length to five minutes. Make sure that quick capture is also set to close. You want to make sure you turn the watermark off as well unless you want to be an advert for Insta360 in all of your videos. So now a short press of the button on the back of the camera will turn it on and a second press will start the video recording which is indicated by an LED flashing white. After five minutes the camera will automatically stop recording and shut down but if you want to stop the recording early then it's another short press and then a long press to turn it off. It's also a long press of the button when the camera is off and you'll get haptic feedback twice and it will go into Bluetooth mode.
The package comes with a bunch of magnetic accessories, but it's only really the mount with a tripod thread that can be used on big models, and that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, the tripod mount will add too much weight for the majority of micro quadcopters, and secondly, the camera's sensor and gyro is really sensitive to vibrations. So on a bigger model like a 5 inch you can use the included tripod and get decent results because the vibrations have more room to dissipate. But all of the adverts I've seen for this camera show it being used on the Diatone Tina which I have. So I cable tied the Insta360 GO to the top of the Diatone model and the footage came out really shaky with stabilization turned on. And in the end I had to 3D print the mount shown in all of the adverts which you can download from Thingy and I finally got decent results from it but only inside and even then the footage from the camera came out fairly dark with a little bit of grain to go with it and as soon as I flew it outside on a sunny day there was a fair amount of jello present in the footage so I tried all sorts of different mounts and different infill percentages with the TPU but this was the best I could get out of it now if it was an overcast day or closer to dusk then there wouldn't be any jello but I wouldn't recommend the Tina Whoop as the main contender for this camera the problem with the Tina Whoop is that the motors are too close to where the camera is sitting and if you strap the camera down without any flex then the vibrations from the motors are clearly disturbing the gyro so the camera mount has to be really flexible to stop that but then there's the problem of rolling shutter jello which I couldn't get rid of so instead I printed a general purpose mount which can be attached to any model using cable ties or rubber bands and fixed it to the GEP RC Cine Pro 4K because I've put all sorts of cameras on this model and it has never let me down due to the separation of the motors from the frame I did have to remove the front protectors though because the camera has such a wide field of view that in some of the stabilized shots they were shown at the bottom of the image but I got a perfect result with this setup which I will show you later but next I want to talk about the ways you can edit the recorded footage. The first option is to plug the camera into your phone and then go into the camera's album and download the video file to your phone's local storage. The only problem is that a five minute video file is one and a half gig so you have to make sure that your phone has plenty of room. You can do simple things like trim the footage or add a bit of color grading like you can on Instagram and you can select between the two different stabilization methods so flow state will always lock the horizon which means if you do a roll then you won't see it and FPV stabilization is similar to hypersmooth the problem with FPV stabilization is that it exports the video file in the wrong orientation and a slightly incorrect resolution of 1088 by 1920 you can correct the orientation issue but the incorrect resolution will leave your video slightly stretched you first have to export the file to your phone which will create another file in your phone's camera album around 80% the size of the original file because the phone app exports the video at 1080p 30 megabit which is a lower resolution than the camera originally captures. You can then use the Google Photo Album app and go into the settings to correct the orientation of the video. And it does save the video at almost the same bitrate, but like I say, the video ends up a little bit stretched and some quality is lost as well due to it being encoded for a second time. But flow state stabilization exports in the correct resolution and the correct orientation as well. So that works quite well on the phone app. But Insta360 need to fix those other issues so I will pass on the information to them. You can share the video direct to social media from here if you like. There's also a color plus option which is another color grading setting. However, I found it took much longer to export when it was selected and it didn't really add anything. So my personal recommendation is to use the PC app because even though FPV stabilization still outputs at the wrong orientation, it gets the resolution right and you can also export at a higher bitrate. 
rate, so you won't lose as much quality when you re-encode it. I then put my videos into Adobe Premiere Pro to correct the orientation. In fact, the PC app installs a plugin for Adobe Premiere, so you can dump the original INSV file in there, but sadly, FPV stabilization is missing from the options, and you can only select flow state. So I've advised Insta360 of this as well. So this is a flight that I recorded with the Cine Pro 4K on a very sunny day and as you can see the footage looks much better. I'll show you the flight using FPV stabilization first and then again with flow state so you can see the difference between the two. But I'll quickly show you a clip that you probably won't see anywhere else because I managed to extract the raw 2720 by 2720 video file that the camera records and as you can see it's almost a 180 degree image. But going back to the FPV stabilization footage, you can see that it's very similar to Hyper Smooth. Adding the camera to the Cine Pro 4K did cause a little bit of prop wash, which does still show up a little, whereas Hyper Smooth tends to completely eradicate prop wash. And something else that I thought was interesting is that no matter what stabilization setting you choose, or no stabilization at all, it retains a similar field of view, which is pretty wide as well. The camera also has fairly decent audio, but on a micro, audio never sounds that great. But I'll let you have a listen to it anyways. Something that I did find annoying about the camera is that it's really difficult not to press the button. I mean, it's so small anyways, so when you are placing it into the TPU mount, it's guaranteed to always turn on. Something else that you need to do as well when turning the camera on is make sure that you have the orientation correct because it calibrates the gyro when you turn it on. So there you go, that is my review of the Insta360 GO. You have to spend a fair amount of time to get good results out of it with micro quads, which is where I think the camera is best suited, but you can stick it on a bigger model and get quicker results without sacrificing any weight. But the phone app, the PC app, and the plugin for Adobe Premiere need some fixes for the best experience. So I'll put some links in the video description as well as a pinned comment if you wish to get one and I'll leave you with some flying footage so as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers